Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Today's question is, can I offer an update on the Delphi murders, including the Odin conspiracy theory? Just a reminder, I'm not diagnosing anybody in this video, only speculating about what could be happening in a situation like this. If you enjoy this video, please like it, subscribe to my channel, and consider supporting me on Patreon. I'll put the link to Patreon in the description for this video. First, I'll provide a brief background of this case, including the timeline of the crime, move to a summary of the memorandum about the Odin conspiracy theory, then offer my analysis. In 2017, 14-year-old Liberty German and 13-year-old Abigail Williams lived in Delphi, Indiana. This is a small town with a population of just under 3,000. It is located about a half hour northeast of Lafayette. On February 13, 2017, at 1.35 p.m., Liberty's older sister dropped Liberty and Abigail off on County Road 300 North so they could hike on the Delphi Historic Trails. Liberty and Abigail hiked to the Monon High Bridge, which is also simply called the High Bridge. This railroad bridge, which crosses Deer Creek, was built in 1891 and abandoned in 1987. At 2.07 p.m., Liberty posted an image of Abigail walking on the high bridge. The girls were never heard from again. Not long after this image was taken, Liberty and Abigail were murdered. The girls failed to meet a family member as planned at 3.15 p.m. and were reported missing at 5.30 p.m. Their bodies were discovered on the north bank of Deer Creek the next day. The crime scene was brutal. Abigail was found wearing Liberty's clothing and Liberty was not wearing anything. There were sticks positioned across their bodies, and Liberty's blood was on a tree near her body. The blood appeared to draw the letter F. On the day of the murder, February 13, at 2.13 p.m., Liberty used her cell phone to record what has now become a notorious video of a man on the bridge. As the man approached both Liberty and Abigail, one of them said the word gun. In audio that was released separately, the man appears to say, guys, down the hill. After this, no outgoing communications were made from Liberty's phone. The police investigated this case for a few years. There were a number of suspects, but the case did not appear to be moving forward. This dramatically changed on October 26, 2022, when a 50-year-old pharmacy technician named Richard Matthew Allen was arrested. Two days later, he was charged with two counts of murder. Richard has maintained his innocence. Information about the case against him has been greatly restricted, and it is shrouded in mystery. In September of 2023, his defense submitted a 136-page memorandum to the court, which contains a lot of new information and a compelling argument supporting Richard's innocence. Here is a summary of the memorandum. Much of this is paraphrased, and I changed the order of certain items so the narrative makes more sense. A key part of the argument made in favor of Richard deals with a pagan religion called Odinism. The memorandum asserts that followers of Odinism murdered Liberty German and Abigail Williams. Odinism is a pagan Norse religion which involves a deity named Odin. The followers of this religion, who are called Odinites, are fascinated with Viking culture and Nordic culture. The religion has an association with white supremacy. It is not well organized and does not have a lot of members. Symbols that were found at the crime scene could be connected to Odinism. The symbols were formed with sticks, tree branches, and painted in blood. For example, sticks were positioned around Abigail's head in a pattern similar to antlers, which is a symbol used in Odinism. Investigators spoke to a professor about these symbols left at the crime scene. The professor dismissed the theory that Odinism was related to the crime, so investigators gave up on that angle. When investigators were asked to revisit this theory, they could not find any record of the professor, and they will probably never be able to identify him. The defense is essentially arguing that the connection between Odinism and the crime scene was arbitrarily dismissed by investigators. This is important because Richard Allen doesn't have any ties to Odinism. The memorandum talks about how a retired police chief and two of his colleagues believed that the evidence against Richard Allen was less compelling 
than the theory about Odinism. These three investigators believed that a group of men who lived in Rushville, Indiana, and practiced Odinism were connected to the murders. Rushville is about two hours from Delphi. In addition, the Behavioral Analysis Unit of the FBI believed that those responsible for the homicides were involved in Nordic beliefs. The memorandum describes an Odinite who I will refer to using the pseudonym Bill. He has a connection to Abigail through his son who once dated her. Richard's attorneys argued that Bill left Easter eggs indicating how he was somehow involved in the murders. There are several descriptions suggesting that particular symbols in Bill's social media posts looked a lot like items at the crime scene. Understandably, none of these images are available to the public. Based solely on the written descriptions, the similarities between the images and the crime scene appear significant. I don't know if they can be fully explained through coincidence. For example, one social media post contained sticks that formed the letter F. The same letter was painted on a tree at the crime scene using blood. Despite evidence pointing toward Bill, the police cleared him as a potential suspect on March 16, 2017, which was only about a month after the murders. An associate of Bill, who I will call Edward, allegedly confessed to his sister that he was involved in the murders and supplied her with details about the crime scene. After being questioned by the police, he was dropped off at his trailer. Edward turned around and walked back to the police cruiser and asked the state trooper if his saliva was found on one of the victims, would he still be in trouble? Edward did not have a good alibi, but he was cleared as a potential suspect anyway. Bill had another associate, who I will call Jim. Jim's ex-girlfriend said that he borrowed her car around Valentine's Day in 2017. When he returned the vehicle, it had dried blood on one side of it. The police never investigated Jim. Consistent with the Odin theory, the memorandum talks about how it would be extremely difficult for one person to have committed both murders. The document listed 92 actions that Richard would have had to complete alone in order to facilitate the murders. For example, crossing a cold river while keeping control of two victims, killing one victim without the other victim running away, and managing not to leave any DNA behind. All these activities took between 17 minutes and one hour and 17 minutes after the man was captured in the notorious Down the Hill video at 2.13 p.m. Another component of the Odin theory suggests that two Odinites work as correctional officers in the jail where Richard is being confined. These officers allegedly displayed patches containing Odinite symbols. They threatened, intimidated, and mistreated Richard, and they interfered with him having private conversations with his attorneys. The memorandum argued that investigators falsified information to support their timeline. For example, the police told a story about a woman who saw a man on the high bridge and a vehicle in a parking lot nearby. The woman's description of the man did not match Richard, and her description of the car in the parking lot did not match his vehicle. Investigators claimed that a woman saw a man wearing a blue coat with blood on it. The woman actually said the man was wearing a tan coat and his pants were muddy. When stepping back and looking at the entire memorandum, Richard's lawyers are essentially saying that there are alternate suspects, the police concealed exculpatory evidence, and there is no meaningful evidence against Richard Allen. Now moving to my analysis. Here are my thoughts on a few areas that stood out to me in this case. Item number one. In documents that were released earlier, the state indicated that an unspent 40 caliber cartridge was found at the crime scene. Richard Allen owned a 40 caliber semi-automatic pistol. The state tried to connect the cartridge to the pistol by saying that marks on the cartridge indicated it had been manually cycled through Richard's pistol. It is unlikely that the police were actually able to make this connection. The science behind connecting parts of a cartridge to firearms is debatable and filled with uncertainty. I find it interesting that the memorandum only addresses the cartridge issue by mentioning how it was not photographed at the crime scene. It does not appear as though Richard's attorneys are too worried about the cartridge. Item number two, 
According to the state, Richard allegedly confessed at least five times in recorded jail conversations with his wife and mother. This is a bombshell allegation, yet it's not mentioned in the memorandum. Perhaps Richard's attorneys are not too worried about it, or they don't have a good explanation for the alleged behavior. There are some references to the idea that Richard is frightened and maybe not thinking clearly in jail. Perhaps this could explain his alleged incriminating statements. Item number three, Richard's attorneys argued that multiple followers of Odin were involved in a conspiracy of some type to commit the murders. They offered some evidence connecting these people to the crime, but it's not overwhelming as they characterized it. The argument included a lot of vague statements that witnesses made and loose connections to the crime scene through the symbols of Odinism. I think the memorandum makes a better argument for a lack of evidence against Richard than it does for a strong case against these Odinites. The potential suspects described in the document do not appear to be sophisticated or capable of carrying out a complex conspiracy. I think what happened here is that investigators chased so many leads, they left themselves open for the what about this guy defense. Like every time the state points to Richard as a suspect, his defense can point to somebody else the police investigated and say, what about this guy? There is always someone else for them to implicate. Item number four, the memorandum is very detailed and almost has a conspiracy theory feel to it. Some of the language used in the document could be described as unrefined, inelegant, crude, unpolished, and coarse. Here are just a few phrases taken directly from the document which illustrate my point. Quote, simply mind-blowing, unquote. Quote, any person with even a small amount of common sense or curiosity, unquote. Quote, so-called investigation, unquote. And, quote, the defense is not inventing, fabricating, or exaggerating these facts, no matter how crazy those facts may appear, unquote. Moving to the next section, let's take a look at the evidence both for and against the idea that Richard is guilty based on the new information released in the memorandum. Starting with the inculpatory factors, Richard lived within two and a half miles of the high bridge. He had knowledge of the Delphi trails. Richard allegedly told the police that he was on the Delphi trails from 1.30 p.m. to 3.30 p.m. on the day of the murders. Richard's physical appearance is somewhat similar to the man captured on the notorious video. He is about the right age, height, and weight, and he admitted to wearing clothes which were similar to what the man in the video was wearing. The police claimed that a witness saw Richard's vehicle near the bridge. The witness and another witness spotted a man in the area. The police said these witness descriptions matched Richard. One of the murder victims mentioned a gun. Richard owned a gun. It was chambered in the same caliber as a cartridge which was found between the bodies, 40 caliber S&W. Richard Allen allegedly confessed to the murders when he was on recorded phone calls in jail. Moving to the exculpatory factors, no DNA and no electronic evidence connect Richard to the crime scene. There is evidence that Richard told the police that he was on the Delphi trails from noon to 1.30 p.m., which differs from the story the police told. Again, they claim that Richard told them he was there from 1.30 p.m. to 3.30 p.m. The police say a witness saw Richard's Ford Focus, but the vehicle the witness described does not match this vehicle. The police claim this witness and another witness saw a man who looked like Richard, but when examining their accounts, it's not clear who they saw. The same witness who allegedly saw his vehicle described a man in his 20s with a medium build on the high bridge. This doesn't sound like Richard at all. The other witness described a man wearing a tan coat and muddy pants, which does not match the man the other witness described. Three police officers investigating the murders believed the Odin theory could be true. The murders would have been difficult for one man to carry out, yet the state has only arrested one man, Richard Allen. If Richard is innocent, it is not inconceivable that he would make incriminating statements to relatives due to the mental health stressors being placed on him. When considering the evidence in this case, do I think that Richard Allen is guilty? No, I do not believe he is guilty beyond a reasonable doubt 
based on the evidence that has been released so far. I think the problem for Richard is that jury members tend to overvalue incriminating statements made by defendants. His statements from jail may get him convicted despite there being no other real evidence against him. This case may come down to a mental health argument. Richard's attorneys may want to work on demonstrating how being in jail caused Richard's mental health to deteriorate. Now moving to my final thoughts. Law enforcement was under a lot of pressure to find the perpetrator of the Delphi murders. There wasn't as much evidence available as one would expect in a double homicide involving bodies that were recovered. Investigators made many mistakes, and now the prosecution is suffering due to those mistakes. Increasingly, it seems as though either Richard Allen was a master criminal who managed to pull off the murders without leaving any real evidence behind, or he is a victim of a corrupt and haphazard investigation. Those are my thoughts on the case of Richard Allen, including the Odin conspiracy theory. Please put any opinions and thoughts in the comments section. They always generate an interesting dialogue. As always, I hope you found my analysis of this topic to be informative. Thanks for watching.